Hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy Elliott. I'm here today with my man, Tony Clyde. What's up, guys? Hey, check this out, guys. So look, we're doing a four-part series over closing and negotiating. So we're calling it Closing and Negotiating 101. These are the four or five basic closes that will help you make a ton of money. Now listen, because you know something doesn't mean that you know how to do it, okay? So what I would like to do is this. I'm gonna make this video. Today we're gonna talk about price. Three different forms of price that will really help you when someone says, hey, I think the price is too high. Guess what? After this video, you're gonna be able to handle it. 80% of that, there will be no more fear. You will never have an issue again. Now, Tony is gonna to be my little role play partner here, and I wanna show you the reason why I have Tony, is, and I say little role play partner, obviously he's bigger than me, <laughs> but my point is I want you to know that you need to have a role play partner, somebody to work with. And the way that you're watching us work today is the way that you need to work. Now look, I do the Master Closer Seminar four times a year. This is the ba this isn't in the master closer seminar. This is the basics that every salesman in the country should know. And what I teach and what we're going to teach today is called money justification closing and negotiating. So let's get into it. Today we're going to go over the price. So basically, let me flip around here. Series 1, this is going to be series 1 of 4, okay? So when we're done with this video, over the rest of this week I'll release 2, 3 and 4. Series one is going to be all price. Series two is going to be all payment. Hey, I think the payment's too high. Series three is going to be trade-in. I want more from my trade-in. And then series four is going to be, I need to think about it, or maybe even during negotiating when you got the money out on the table, all of a sudden the customer gets called and says, man, I'm going to, we're going to need to get back with you. Guess what? I'm going to show you how to overcome it, okay? So that way, by the end of the week, you guys are ready to start killing it and making some money and taking your life to the next level, okay? There's a billion things that I can teach you. I think that this week, just these basics, will help you guys during the negotiating. And obviously, most of us get paid off gross. Some of you are off volume. But even if you're only just paid off gross, guess what? This is going to change your life like crazy. But if you're like, well, I get paid off volume. Well, guess what? If you can't close them, do they buy? No. So when there's friction in the deal, right? Yeah. If there's, And when I say friction... You need to guide the customer. Don't fear an objection. Objections are gonna to come. Tony's gonna to say no. I'm not worried about it. You know why? Because I'm confident as a closer and as a negotiator, and you've done a good job the first 90% of the time building value, making them fall in love with the vehicle. The last 10% of the time, we collect 100% of the money. Right. This is where you do it. And remember, it may not always go exactly this way, but this needs to be your process so at least you have a way that's tattooed on your heart, how you're prepared to handle it. And then the other 20%, if there's any unforeseen things that fly in, guess what? You're okay. Your skills elevate, and so you're good. So today, I'm going to write down just some simple numbers. Um, let's make a price of 18.9. okay? And let's also put a payment down here of $3.99 a month. Now, today, this isn't going to be a payment close. Today's going to be about price. But I'm not sure how they uh, pencil in your store, whether it's a four square, whether they do price, payments, or whatever. But bottom line is, I see 90% of the stores that I fly out and train in every week, they have a price and they have a payment on them. Okay? And if there was a trade, we'd throw a trade on there too. So we're just gonna kind of work it this way. And I'm gonna go over the three-step system. Let me go over the first step with you and then I'm gonna do it that way you understand. So 90% of our people, so just to give an example, I trained a store last week. The, the question I asked them was, what is your finance penetration in the store? That means out of 10 people that comes and buys a car, right? How many of those people finance? How many of those people pay cash? That's a good question to go ask your finance department. Say, hey, what's our finance penetration in the store? And you're more, and maybe they say, well, it's about 80%. What that means is if 10 people come into your dealership and buy a car, eight of them are financing. So if eight are financing, would you agree? Probably eight out of 10 are concerned with payments and not the price because they're not writing a check for the car? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So guess what? If they're payment buyers, you must check the payment when someone says the price is too high, right? Correct. So I'm, I call it a smoke screen, but let me show you how. I call it a payment check. Okay, so Tony, I got great news. 189399, sign here, and I'll get your new car cleaned up for you. Andy, I appreciate it, but I think that uh, price is too high. Okay, Tony, other than the price, are, are you okay with this 399 payment? No, I think the payment's a little high also. Okay, 
Awesome. How close can you come to three ninety nine? I could probably do three fifty. Okay, three fifty. And what are you currently paying on your trade in? About three hundred. Cool, three hundred. So you're saying you can afford about fifty more for your new car? Is that right? Correct. Boom. At that point, you know what I'm doing? I'm flipping the paper over. I'm taking Tony straight to a payment close, and I'm never going to talk about price again. Here's the question: Was Tony really saying that the price was too high? No. What what Tony was saying is that he thinks that if the price were to come down, the payment will come down with it too. So guess what? That's what I call a payment check. That is the first step in checking the price. Notice I said, other than the price, are you okay with the payment? Now I draw attention to the payment. My goal is I'm hoping that he bites on payments so I can take him to payment and close him on payments. Price is never brought up again. But if I was to flip over and say, hey, Tony, other than price, right, are you okay with the payment? And Tony was to say, hey, I'm cool with the payment, right? Yeah. I'm not worried about the payment. I just think that the price is too high. Guess what? Now, it's not a payment issue, okay? We'll take that off there. What it really is, is it's a price issue. Right. So if it's a price issue, we always respond by, and I'll kind of move through here, 189399 sign here, let me get your new car cleaned up. Thank you, Andy, but I think that price is too high. Okay, when you say the price is too, or um, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll, I move forward a little fast. Um, other than price, are you okay with the 399 payment? No, the payment's fine, I just think that price is too high. Awesome, my bad. So I'll say, all right, Tony, when you say the price is too high, would you mind being more specific why you think the price is too high? Oh, uh, well, I just think the price is just too high. Okay, let's stop. Now listen, what did I ask Tony? I asked Tony a simple question. When you think the price is too high, would you mind being more, this is after I did the payment check, when you say the price is too high, would you mind being more specific why you think the price is too high? Listen, why? I didn't ask why. I didn't say, why do you think it's too high? No, 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 non-combative, very neutral, right? Neutralize the situation. Watch the way I work with Tony. So Tony, Tony says the price too high. Tony, when you say the price is too high, and I just repeated it back, that way it neutralizes him, and it lets him know that I'm listening to him. Right. When you say the price is too high, would you mind being more specific why you think the price is too high? That right there allows Tony to understand that I'm not doing this with him. It's a working collaborative relationship, right? And anytime you're negotiating, you'll hear, I, watch, I listen to Chris Voss all the time, the FBI negotiator. What does he talk about? Collaborating together, right? It's not you versus them. It's you guys doing it together. So I repeated what he said to me so they know that I was listening to him. I neutralized it, and then I said, when you say that, would you mind being more specific? Why do you think it's too high? Tony says this. He says, well, I just think it's too high. So what does that mean? When someone doesn't give you a specific reason like, this is why I think it's too high, and they say, well, I just think it's too high, what are they doing? They're just probing for a better deal. I mean, how many times, think about this, do salesmen go in on a car deal and a customer says, I think the price is too high. Then the salesman starts dancing around in his seat. He gets nervous. He starts talking about Viato and NADA and yep. all these things. The customer is just probing for a better deal. Don't fall into their trap because when you start talking and panicking, guess what? They see you panicking and they eat it up. Watch. When you say the price is too high, would you mind being more specific? Why do you think it's too high? Andy, I just think the price is too high. Okay, Tony, first of all, number one, now I've realized he's probing for a better deal. This is completely my fault, okay? We've been together for a while, and I've made a bad mistake here. First of all, number one, we've learned that 90% of our customers, they actually want to get the best price up front. And then the other 10% still want to negotiate haggle. Unfortunately, we find it disrespectful and untrustworthy. You see, Tony, I'm looking for a further relationship to just today with you and your family. If I was to mark this price up $3,000 and then bring it back down $3,000, even though you felt like you won, is that trustful? No. No. See, I'm looking for a further relationship than just today. Tony, have I offended you and your family in any way by giving you my best price up front? Have I offended you guys in any way? Ma'am, sir, have I offended you in any way? No. Tony, thank goodness. Appreciate you. You'll sign right here. I'll get your new car cleaned up. And again, I apologize for that. And then when would you like your first payment due? Towards the beginning of the month, the middle of the month? What's going to work best for you and your family? Always remember this. During a negotiation, okay, people will remember the last thing you say. It's how negotiation works. If I talk to Tony, right, what did I do? I automatically went in for a close. Have I offended you in any way by giving you my best price up front? Tony says no. I've already handled the fact that 90% of our customers want the best price up front. I've explained to them that this is my fault. I use an empathy close, and then guess what I did? 
Whenever I said, thank you so much for not offending you, I didn't say, are you okay to buy it? Would you like to sign here? No, I said, hey, Tony, sign here. Let me get your new car cleaned up. And I forgot to ask you, when would you like to set your first payment due? Right? Normally yeah. payments are due 30 days, right? So was that okay just setting it in a month from now? Would that be fine? Maybe your dealership offers 45 days to your first payment. So you can say something like, hey, Tony, would you like your first payment due in 30 days or six and a half weeks? What would be better? Just move in deflect. Okay, so that's how it's done, and that would be um, no motive. Tony doesn't have a motive, he's just probing for a better deal. That's step two on the price is too high. Okay, let's back in to the very last stage, which is, to, I want Tony to say, hey, well, I saw one about $1,500 cheaper down the road. This is where we're gonna go into the purchase price versus the ownership price close. It's very simple, in a seated position, have I had to write much here? No. No, you know why? Because I don't need to. These are word tracks that you'll have tattooed on your heart. I'm, I'm sitting, if I was in a chair, I'd be sitting knee to knee with Tony. I would be turned towards him. I would be down low. I'd probably even have my hand out as I'm speaking with him. And guess what? Knee to knee in a seated position. Don't go across desks. Get your chair and come around to him. Why? Because this closing is lethal like this. I always say, if you can put your arms around somebody, guess what? You can close them. It's like a football. If you can touch it, you can catch it. Right? Yeah. If you can't touch it, I get it why you couldn't catch it. But if you can touch it, you can catch it, okay? You see sometimes in the NFL, these guys will just touch a football and they'll pull it in and catch it. That's how great closers work. That's how master closers work. All right, so let's move into the very last part. This is gonna be the ownership price, okay? So let's do this. So Tony, um, 18.9, sign here, 3.99, I'm gonna get you your car cleaned up. Andy, thank you, but I think that price is too high. Okay, other than the price, are you okay for 399 payment? Yeah, I think the payment's okay. Okay. Tony, when you say the price is too high, would you mind being more specific why you think the price is too high? Well, I saw a similar vehicle just like this, but it was $1,500 less. Okay, I got you. So let me, and now watch this. You guys have a piece of paper, it's your worksheet, right? Flip it over and start working your deal on the back side. Watch this. So, Tony, let me write this down just to make sure, obviously, this isn't working anymore. Sorry about that. Let's go to blue. It's my magic number. Flip over the back side of the piece of paper and I will always draw an X. And what that means is this. I'll say, so let me make sure I understand exactly what you're saying. 18.9, this is us. And then you're saying you saw one at 17.4 down the road at ABC Motors. Is that right? Right. Okay, awesome. So with our store, Tony, we do 127 point service inspection. Let me explain this to you. This is the purchase price of the car. This is how much the car would cost today. We took this car in and we did a 127 point service inspection. What happens is when we get a 127 point service inspection, we end up probably most of the time spending a good amount in recon, maybe $800 plus, okay? Sometimes more, I've seen cars have $1,500 spent on them in recon. Why? Because it's important for us to make this car brand new for you and your family. When you buy a car, don't you want that dealership to be high in all the critical areas that are important to you and your family? Yes. Great, that's us. Okay, also, we do everything that the eyes can and cannot see. I said can and cannot. So when you park these two cars next to each other, if their tires shined up and they're both clean and they look the same, it doesn't mean that they are the same. One car may have the transmission flushed underneath it and may have been fully serviced. The other one may have had, not, have done, had that stuff done. Well, my point is, you're gonna probably own this car for how long? Three years maybe? Three, four years. Probably the trade cycle? Okay, so the goal is the purchase price on our car is eighteen nine. Our goal is over the next three years that you own the vehicle, other than oil changes, right? We don't want you to spend any money out of pocket. Eighteen nine plus zero money, the purchase price, okay, which is right here. This is the purchase price. This is how much it costs today. The ownership price, right? Right. Would actually be eighteen nine. Tony, if you were to buy a car, and I'm just gonna ask this question for three thousand dollars, and let's say you were to drive it for six months and the transmission was to go out, and it was to cost $3,000 for the transmission. How much would that car cost you? $6,000. Awesome. How much did you pay for it when you bought it? $3,000. So you're saying it's possible to have a $3,000 purchase price and a $6,000 ownership price. See, right. see Tony, 90% of our customers have agreed that the ownership price is actually the real money spent on the vehicle. Sometimes a purchase price could be a dangling carrot and we could get confused. Let's talk about ABC Motors for a second. A lot of stores around our area only do 27 point inspections. 
As you compare that to where we're at, Tony, guess what? Obviously, they're going to be spending less money in their service department. Let's say they spend $200 in their service department. Guess what happens? Can you even afford to put a, a set of Maypop tires on that car that may pop when you drive off the lot? No? No. So guess what? They only do things that the eyes can see. They don't touch what can't be seen. You know why? Because their deal is they don't want to be high in all the critical areas that are important to you and your family. You know what they want to do? They want to put out the cheapest, cheap, Tony, price on the market. Why? So that you'll bite on it because if they don't sell it within 30 to 60 days, you know what's going to happen? That car is going to go back to the auction. And they know if they spend too much money here on servicing it, guess what happens? They can't take it back to the auction and get their money back out of it because the auction don't care about the service. So you know what happens? They're more concerned about losing money than taking care of you in the long run. So since they do the things that only the eyes can see what can't be seen, guess what? Because the car wasn't serviced to be like new for you and your family, guess what happens? Shortcutting, small problems create big problems. Right. 17 four plus $2,000 spent over the next three years because the car wasn't serviced to be like new for you and your family, but you bit on the low dangling carrot, guess what? 17 four plus two grand, Guess what? I'm not the best at math, but that's 19.4. Plus time and inconvenience in the service station. I don't know how much you make an hour, but just start to add that up on top of that. Right. So I talked about this is the purchase price. This is the purchase price. At the end of the day, my ownership price would be 18.9. Their ownership price would be 19.4 plus time and inconvenience. And not to mention if something was to happen big because the small thing's not being done right, that could continually even cost you more than that. So the purchase price is important, but that's a one-time spend. The ownership price is the real money spent because that's the money you spend in the long haul. You work hard for your money, you put your money right. in the bank, and just like you want to buy a $3,000 car here, it ended up costing you $6,000. The purchase price was $3,000, the ownership price was $6,000. This is what we commonly see, and I want to tell you this. This is the way you buy cars at other dealerships. With us here, we like to be transparent. We put our best prices up front, and I hope I didn't offend you by putting our best price up front, but showing you how we're high in all the critical areas that are important to you and your family, would you agree with great business? You can afford to be a little higher in price as long as you're great in business. And the way normal businesses work, they're cheaper in price, but they're also cheaper in all the areas. And that in the end, they end up costing you more money, right or wrong? Right. See, Tony, so what I would like to do with this vehicle is put it in your driveway. I'd love to sell it to you. And then three years from now, when you don't spend any money and you've had a great experience, would you not come back to me and buy every car that you buy for the rest of your life? Sure. Yeah. But if you buy this vehicle and you end up spending this money out of pocket, are you going to go back there again? Or are you just going to complain that car dealerships rip you off and they don't service their cars well? Right. You see, this is the way everyone else does business. And this is the way that we've done business. And I'm so glad we met. So Tony, at 189 399 sign here. Let me get your new car cleaned up. And I apologize. I forgot to ask you. When do you want to set your first payment due? Towards the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, or what's going to work best for you and your family? At that point... I'll deviate again. Now, I want to tell you something. Now, back up. Let's see how you handle it. If somebody was to say, I think the price is too high, there's one cheaper down the road, I get that you have V-Auto tools. I get it. But listen, could I pull the V-Auto tool out as a secondary form of closing and close after this? Absolutely. Listen, you guys can continue to stack these things, but I want to ask you this. How many dealerships have V-Auto tools? Every one of them. So another dealership across the street, there was a salesman that pulled the same Viato pitch, and now you're pulling it? Do you want to be different than other salesmen around you and be a one percenter and be a master closer? Or do you want to be just like everyone else out there? You want to be different. The things that I teach you will show you how to be different than everyone else. Everyone, all your managers, most people around are saying, hey, if they say the price is too high, we know out of 200 cars, V Auto says this is number four in ranking. Your customers don't care about that. Technology is beautiful. Pull that in as secondary closing behind this. Now Tony says, well man, I, I see that, but I, I still think it's too high. Okay, time out, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me show you this right here. But also, can I tell you this? How about actually closing and selling and being great at negotiating? Do you have to be the cheapest in price to sell people a car? No, you have to give them a reason and an excuse why they should pay what you're asking and they'll pay it. Do you think people wanna pay for $1,000 iPhones? Hell no, they pay it. Could they buy a cheaper phone somewhere else? 
Yes. But it's packaged so well. And it's explained so well that they say yes and buy it. At 250 payments. So here's my point. People always want a better deal. But you know what they want more than they want a better deal? They want someone to be able to walk them through the process with no friction, no combativeness, right? Someone who's a professional and a skill. Learn this like the back of your hand. Watch this video a hundred times over. Yeah. And I will tell you this, okay? You will elevate your paycheck, paycheck 10x. Nobody's perfect. You're gonna mess up and you probably will fail on this your first 20 times doing it. But on your 21st, you'll start hitting big grosses. Let me explain this to you. It's called the compound effect. This is why I have Tony with me this week going through the negotiating because I want to show you guys that you have to find a role play partner. You have to find somebody that believes in you and somebody who's serious about going to the next level just like you are. So guys, I hope this helped. This is negotiating over price. Tony's with me today. I want you guys to meet him again. He'll be with me all the time. I want you guys to kill it. Have a blessed day. And I hope this helps. Go make some big gross and text me.